In this video, we'll be taking another look at arrays, but specifically in terms of how to use iteration with them. So this video describes how to write values into and read values out from an array using iteration. It assumes you've already watched and are comfortable with the contents of the previous video on the use of arrays. Now, there's actually no real new content to learn in here, so I think this is our only video without a take notes icon. But feel free to pause the video when you see some of the coded example and jot down some of the pseudocode on the screen if you think that will help. As arrays can contain lots of separate data items, it is common to need to travel through all the elements in an array. Maybe it's because you want to populate the entire array with some initial data, or traverse through it methodically to find or update an item, or maybe you simply want to output the entire contents of an array. Luckily, we already have an ideal programming construct which supports this, and that's iteration, and quite specifically, the for loop. So as you already understand what an array is from the previous video, let's dive straight in and look at some pseudocode examples. Here, we're using a for loop to populate the test scores of 10 students into a one dimensional array. You can see we're using a for loop for naught to nine, and each time around the loop, we're saying enter the next test score. We then input the value that they've entered into the test scores array at the counter position, which of course will be increasing each time around the for loop. We can see some example output down the bottom there, which the user would see as this program run, and the contents of the array filling up on the right. Now, a quick note, we've said this before, but each element of the array is referenced by its index number. Now, in the IGCC pseudocode, they all tend to use one as the first index, but many languages use zero as the first index. So just be careful in the exam. This next example, we're showing how we're using a for loop to output the contents of the test score array. So the entire test score array is now full. Again, we're using a fixed for loop, a counter controlled for loop from naught to nine. And then we've got an output line that's outputting the string test score plus the value of the counter plus one, followed by the contents of the test score table. And we've got the example output there at the bottom of the screen. So moving on to two dimensional arrays, um, we're now gonna be using a nested for loop. And this is something you need to be able to do in the exam. Whenever you've got a two dimensional array, you'll require a nested for loop if you wish to travel through every single element in the most efficient way possible. So in this situation, we're going to be populating the lowest and the highest marks of 10 students. So we're gonna have the students down the left-hand side, their index is naught to nine, and then the first column will have the low score, and in the second column will have their high score. You can see we've declared a two-dimensional array at the top of the screen. And then we're using two counters for counter X naught to nine. So that's for each row in the table for each student. We're going to output the number of the student and a prompt. And then we've got an inner for loop that's only looping twice from naught to one because there's only a high, low and a high score and we get them to input the score. And you can see when we actually get to the input line in the inner nested for loop, we're saying test scores counter X counter y. So that's the value of the outer loop followed by the value of the inner loop. We've got some example output there at the bottom of the screen. If we want to output the contents of this two dimensional array, we can just use a single loop. So here uh, we have got a couple of nice output lines that happen outside the loop. That's just provide us with like a bit of a, a heading. And then we've got our single loop that's gonna go through each row, starting at row naught down to row nine. But the output line looks quite complex. 
But what it's doing is outputting the value of the counter plus one. So that student at index zero is being called student one. We're then outputting a few spaces. We're then outputting the value from the test scores table from the counter row column zero. A few more spaces. And then we're looking at counter row zero and column one. Thank you.